seen done help synchrophasers before. When we say synchrophasers, you know what we're talking about. So, a little bit better. So, for you uh, synchrophaser novices, um, you know, consider it, you know, just a, another more advanced way of um, looking at the, pow the health of the power system. You know, it's just, uh, it represents an application that, you know, really is unlike most legacy utility applications. So, by inherently, it brings a lot of challenges to the table at the same time. So, you know, it's really going to exercise utilities and, you know, the custodians handling the data uh, for things that they've really not had to deal with before. So, um, it looks like uh, a couple of our panelists have got presentations done, which makes my job really easy. Uh, and then we'll follow up from there. So, you guys worked out the uh, batting order? You can go ahead. Okay. About 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes, all right. I thought, uh, given this particular audience, and that's what Brian said, this is maybe a little bit of a different genre uh, than you're used to dealing with. Yeah, love the discussions today about talking about AMI and uh, the, the data streams and, and the data volumes. Uh, th this is an interesting set of data in the fact that it really is the same kind of data, but it moves a whole lot faster. So I'll give you some ideas. I guess the bigger question for people attending this meeting is, is what the heck is a synchrophaser anyway? And uh, basically, it's a measurement of the electrical system, it, uh, a phaser being a vector component, two pieces, an angle, and a magnitude. The magnitude you're probably familiar with, that's the voltage or, or, the, or the current. Uh, the angle is just one more component on this AC system. And you know, measuring the difference between these angles allows you to measure things on the grid that all engineers know about, but we've never had a really good measurement of before. The synchro part of the phaser uh, it comes around from a timestamp that gets collected right when the item gets measured. So the time synchronicity of the measurements is what makes this special, because there are network delays, and if you're able to figure out exactly when everything was measured and line them up and look at them sort of as one picture in a moving set of pictures, you get an idea of what's going on on the grid. There are devices in the field today, uh, and there are several DOE grants to install lots of them. They're called phaser measurement units. These particular devices measure these phasers at a very high frequency, and they push the data back to the control center centers at about 30 samples a second. And I thought I could try to uh, pop over and actually show you uh, an idea of what this speed really looks like. I have an application on this system that can actually show you how fast the data moves. So from an AMI perspective, this is the speed of phasers. And why is this important? Why do you really need the data this fast? And the reason is traditional kind of SCADA and AMI systems transmit you know, every couple seconds, sort of in a human understandable range. But there's a lot of information that's going on really fast. Uh, the system that operates our power grid runs at 60 hertz. There's information in there, high speed and high frequency oscillations that you can't see otherwise. So it's this moving picture of information that you need to be able to see so you can really analyze and see things you've never seen before. If you had this information early on, these become early detection mechanisms for preventing blackouts. And a lot of the blackout investigations that we had in the past, it's been very easy to see that it, we had almost an hour or two notice sometimes if you started watching the angles. But again, we didn't have any way to really effectively measure the angles and look at them uh, relative to each other. So this technology is being deployed and the goal ultimately is to help with the detection of system oscillations and the prevention of blackouts. My guess is initially a lot of the work will come about and will be not necessarily preventing them but at least after they happen, we'll be able to figure out what happened very quickly and then maybe develop algorithms to put alarms into the system and allow operators to act more quickly. So it's an intelligent piece of the smart grid, but it's more on the high-end system where you typically think smart grid, you think consumer-driven devices. Well, there's a whole other side of this, and that's on the bulk power system that's dealing with the, the smart grid as well. So that's the whole synchrophaser vision. So. My goal today is sort of to give you a brief overview of what this is, and then we'll move into the security implications of this, which are very similar in most aspects to the AMI stuff and security issues we've dealt with in the past. It's still basically IT technology. Some of the common pieces of this technology that's being deployed, again, are the PMUs. In this picture, they aren't 
easily identified, let's see if I can draw a circle around one, the PMUs would be uh, this little device here. If I can click on it, I'll just point to it. So it's the, the blue icons with the little antennas on top that's supposed to represent GPS. Those are the PMUs. They flow into something called a PDC. That's a phaser data concentrator. It collects all these data from multiple devices and brings it together. These get pushed up further in the stream to a corporate level or a control center level PDC. That way they can do analysis in real time on this data and actually store it at its full resolution. Exchanging the data between two utilities is an emerging technology for which I, we received one of our grants to help develop this technology, a secure edge device to move phaser, or phaser data uh, across in between utilities. There's a lot of commonality between those two devices, uh, the phaser gateway and the concentrator, but the gateways act more like routers and more like edge devices, and those are the pieces that really bring security into focus. When you think about what a phaser gateway does, the two pieces that are really integral to security are the fact that it becomes the point of interface between two companies. It's that edge device where things can be attacked, but it provides, like a firewall, a mechanism to separate your protected infrastructure from that infrastructure which is exposed, sort of a DMZ, if you will, uh, for, for exchanging this high-speed data. The whole goal of this, ultimately, is to provide a much more powerful and much more secure way to exchange data between utilities. It's this common mode of operation where you're publishing a set of signals such that authorized people can subscribe to them. That creates uh, lots of data flows, a very complex diagram you're staring at, but what you're trying to do is simplify the technology, making it easy to deploy and easy to secure by creating these intermediate gateway components. So the DOE grant we've been involved with uh, specifically deals with creating this gateway, creating this secure device that can allow for inter-utility data exchange on a very quick time frame. So today, what we're developing is an open gateway to exchange this data, and in the future, take that gateway to the next level and exchange lots of utility data streams, because there's lots of information utilities must share in order to keep the grid secure. And all this information has to come with metadata. There's a registry of all these signals that need to be exchanged. And it acts like sort of a DNS. So there's a lot of network models that exist today on the internet, IP-based, that we're able to model and sort of build on. So we are collecting data today. The, the field devices are there. They are collecting data. They're moving fast. Um, TVA is one of the largest synchrophaser data hubs in the United States. It's collecting device data from 130 PMUs, full resolution, storing meg uh, terabytes and terabytes of data on a continual basis with no intention of throwing it away. And the reason is there's probably information in there that could be very useful to them in the future. Uh, if they had a pattern of events that are happening over time, they can go back in this data and try to figure out how long does this data been, how long has it been happening? Can we develop an algorithm to detect this particular pattern? So you can't really afford to throw it away now, even though it's a huge amount of data. If you want any more information on this technology, you can go to the uh, NASPY website. NASPY stands for the North American Synchrophaser Initiative, and its mission is to sort of uh, promote this technology, security being one of the important tenets of this technology. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, Darren, you want to go next? or? Okay. Darren Heifel, we'll let Darren introduce himself. Okay. I don't know which hat he's wearing right now. So. <laughs> um, take it away. All right. Thanks, Brian. Um, I believe today I'm wearing my Southern California Edison hat, uh, but sometimes I get confused. Uh, I do also have some, have some work going on for uh, the Department of Energy, both directly for headquarters and also for uh, through the Pacific Northwest National Lab. Um, I'm going to I'm going to kind of go off off track a little bit here today from my slide presentation. So you'll see me sail through a number of slides, um, but I'm happy to follow up and, and make those available if you if, if you'd like. Um, I'm going to talk about. You heard me. You heard myself and Bobby earlier today talk about 
ASAP SG and the Advanced Security Acceleration Project for the Smart Grid and a series of security profiles that we're working on. Well, the first one that we're, uh, I'm sorry, not the first one, the one we're working on right now is Wide Area Monitoring Protection and Control, or sinker phasers, so a sinker phaser security profile. So I'm up here today to talk about a collaborative effort to define security requirements for sinker phaser systems, so the kind of systems that, uh, that Richie and, and William are, are going to talk about. I'm going to run through and talk a little bit about the logical architecture and the use cases and, and failure analysis techniques that we're using to come up with our sets of requirements here. Um, I'm going to go sailing right by the ASAP SG slide summaries because you heard uh, much about that project earlier. You can welcome to go back and take a look at that later if you like. Do have a slide in here that shows some of the workflows, both how community is collaborating and where the work products are going to up through the, the NIST, uh, CSWG, and uh, on to the standards development and standards setting organizations. Um, we have de developed three profiles to date. We're this is the fourth one that we're working on. We're looking at developing profiles for home area networks and substation automation here later this year. So I'll talk about the synchrophaser security profile one in particular. Um, we're talking specifically about time synchronized phaser measurements that leave the substation. And I do make that distinction because um, in some of the more modern substation automation technologies, you do have um, time synchronized measurements that stay within the substation that are even higher speed than sinker phaser measurements. Whereas a sinker phaser measurement uh, typically is around 20 samples per second. Um, a, a, what they call a sampled measured value uh, which runs inside a su substation could be anywhere from 50 to 240 samples per cycle. So if you think about that for a moment, the, uh, a 60 hertz waveform cycles 60 times a second. So it's, uh, it's a substantial difference and it's easy to get the terminology confused and realize and, and not realize exactly the magnitude difference of information you're talking about here. So the scope of what we're addressing are the, are the signals that are leaving the substation, the ones, the, the wide area measurements. So these are the, these are the lower frequency rates. Um, we do plan to come back and address the higher frequency ones later on. Um, there are also classes of data uh, that NASPE, um, the North American Synchrophaser Initiative, has, has designated for, um, this is in relation to um, uh, how for lack of a better way to put it, how serious the data is. Uh, whether you're talking about feeding it into a control application, whether you're talking about uh, using it to feed into a state estimator, whether you're talking about just using it for uh, post-event analysis, uh, whether you're talking about actually using it for research, um, all of these have pretty significantly different parameters on them in terms of performance. So I'll talk a little bit about the logical architecture. This is, um, this is, it relates some to one of the slides that, that Richie threw up there. I'll, I'll just note that we've got a phaser measurement unit over here in the, in the middle of the diagram. Note the phaser gateway down here in the bottom that kind of spans the edge of the organization. That's one of the devices that, that Richie was talking about. Um, the, uh, you'll see a bunch of things like alignment, alignment, uh, takes the place of, uh, or is the function that we refer to for something like a phaser data concentrator. Basically, the issue here, the real security issues here for phasers are that latency is really important for a system like this. And it's, uh, there's a very important distinction between bandwidth and latency in this context. Um, the bandwidth is actually not all that, um, not all that uh, cumbersome, but Latency is, is a big issue because you're talking about systems that are measured across the transmission system, shared between all organizations within an entire interconnect, as in like the Western interconnect, Eastern interconnect for the United States, um, and shared among transmission operators and reliability coordinators. So you have PMUs scattered from Florida to Tennessee to Massachusetts to Michigan uh, to Mississippi, and you have to get uh, phaser measurements from those devices together, correlated and aligned, and to the application roughly in under two seconds for it to be meaningful. So that's a, that's a pretty sig significant, um, significant security constraint 
when it comes to, uh, to figuring in the requirements of, requirements of your network. Um, and if you don't get the data in in that time window, you pretty much just toss it on the floor and wait for the next one uh, because this is a continuous, a continuous flow of discrete measurements. And you do, uh, you may not actually toss it on the floor. You may hold on to it for research use. But the bottom line is that, um, that in order for it to be meaningful for an application, you have to do an awful lot of thing, a lot, an awful lot of stuff in an awful, awful lot of different locations spread out across a big area in a short time frame. 